I think in, in the last years, I think more and more like international just like have like this connection between what is happening in Palestine and what happened before in South Africa. And in, in South Africa, you know, like, I mean, the international community have very strong involvement in uh, stopping and Boy, ending the apartheid. Yeah. And, uh, for example, about boycott, for example. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, since, like, few months, I mean, even the Palestinian NGOs, like, have very clear call to boycott, divestment, and sanction. I mean, directed to the international uh, community to toward Israel until uh, Israel can implement uh, the international uh, law and uh, the Palestinian rights. I'm, I, I really believe it. I really believe that uh, if you give the Israelis five years to feel that all around the world people think that they uh, that Israel is not different from what South Africa was at the worst time of apartheid. I think it will affect very dramatically. People don't know about the ethnic cleansing in 48. It's quite amazing. Uh, it was such a crime, and uh, it's, nobody talks about it. Uh, and um, in fact, people convinced if you go to your Belgian government or you go to the European community <coughs> and you look at the official papers that the e EC uh, or EU uh, produces on the history of the conflict, you can see that they accept the Israeli position. That the conflict started in 1967. Israel occupied the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, and we in Belgium are very progressive, so we believe that Israel should go out of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip and should allow the Palestinians to have a state there. And for most people in Europe, and in Belgium as well, I suppose, who are interested or are concerned about what's going on here, they say this is peace. And when the Palestinians say, no, this is just the beginning of peace. They look like idiots, like abnormal people, because what, what else do they want, okay? We in Europe want Israelis out of the occupied territories. You can have a state. Well, why, do you, why, why are you asking for more? Because they don't know what happened in 40. They don't know the significance of what happened in 1948. Uh, and, uh, and I think it's very, very important to, to produce uh, all kinds of uh, information kits about 48. The major point is to tell people that um, whether they like it or not, Jews and Arabs will have to share the land together. And sharing is not... When, but when the Israelis talk about share, they talk about war. Mm -hmm. When the Palestinians talk about sharing, they talk about living together, having commerce together, culture together, joint together. Since almost one year, they built new two towers in the whole city, which against each other on this month, this mountain, the other one on the second mountain, just facing each other. And what we are ex expecting that they will just suddenly start connecting those two towers together. With the wall. With the wall. That's how they are building in, in populated areas. Okay? They put the tower here, tower over there. Okay? And suddenly they just create a new situation. Uh, they, they might just ask one of just to kill one of the soldiers. It's an amazing phenomenon that after all the things that the Jews did to the Palestinians, the level of uh, hatred is very low, and the wish to live normal life is very strong, but it won't be for long. No. How long can they stay like this? Uh, but I agree, and I think this is the most difficult thing to explain to Israelis, that most of the Palestinians want normal life. I, I wrote a book which showed that in many, years, in many years during the mandatory period, Jews and Palestinians lived together very, very good, in very good conditions. 
they as workers, as peasants, and, I mean, and, and, and it was only later that this collapsed. And actually, that there is no reason why not living together in, in the future. And, and I think that only if you adopt the, something which is very difficult for the Jews here to adopt, uh, that you need, first of all, to put your humanity above your ethnic identity, above your national identity, above your religious identity. First of all, your humanity. And you would have expected the people who suffered the Holocaust to be the first one in the world to say, what we want is, is a state that has humanity, humanity above everything. But unfortunately, it's not the case. Thank you.